onto one side, right? They will have the advantage. And that's what I was noticing for 203 and company is that they were up above just looking in, right? Allowing Nate or ZR to potentially get a little more comfortable and get that natural early game advantage. So or ZR has got full shields. Swift is going to lose out right there. Looks like that was attack shotgun. Yep. Quick follow up there and three elim eliminations. Four ZR closes up. But the question is, did they get Tasten's card in time? Redux rotating through this mid game in a wonderful layer here. And this is one of the more underappreciated pieces of the game. That late game tarping that allows your trio to stay alive and stay together here at Monster. Yeah, definitely. You got to be able to read the plays. You got to be able to move in and honestly not get yourself choke pointed up. And it's all about layer knowledge as well, right? Playing nice and smart. Redux here. Looking like he's lacking that just a little bit as he face checks a full team focusing in. But luckily, they are going to get just out of the grip of that squad. And now things are starting to come back together for them. I mean, Surge is still very much a problem for a couple players here. Look, four seconds on the clock. This is one of the more deadly zones to have a Surge active, especially if you're one of the ones focused. So got to be careful for anyone looking to go ahead and, and fix their situation of Surge right now. Because, you know, they can be hopping in or be hopped up on by any team at this moment. Yeah, 30 Surge is so dangerous. It causes some crazy plays and a lot of people get ticked away. It's now gone, but Redux oh, says, huge. hey, I'm up huge. above. I'm taking you down. They're jumping in on this full trio. And that's another wipe, but uh-oh, they run into another Seven one. Seven Elims. EU trio, and they're still running through. Seven major Elims right there. So that was a full team wipe. You notice those guys still had their builds up. They just didn't know what hit them for a second <laughs> as they were pinched on both sides. Smite, though, holding things down, leading the tarp out here. And Redux just looks to be the most well-rounded player, right? Like, he goes from leading his team as an IGL to all of a sudden becoming the fragger on the crew. I mean, most teams would look bad. Like, look, look at this, the whole thing, and just be like, hey, we shouldn't be doing this. But, man, Redux is really leading his team to the Elims here. And that's what matters, right? These opening games, finding these massive big points wings, that's going to set them way up in the standings. These the, the really just, again, amplify their positioning right now because those big early openers, they don't happen very often, especially later into the tournament series. So to get them now, that is a huge W. Definitely is. And have a day, Redux. Have a game starting off really well. They find some more Elims. He's not done here yet, Monster. He's rolling through the rest of this lobby. They're on the mid ground, cleaning up layers as they move up and down. And it's now a top four situation, 10 players remaining. So probably only one trio left and a lot of solos or duos lingering in the rest of this lobby. Redux, Smite, Strace in a perfect position to close this out. We see the heals are being transferred over. They're already thinking about the heal game to try and win this. And Clement's down below. He gets beamed up. That could be a free slurp cannon if they're able to grab that. But no, not going to worry about it. Continue to rotate in the zone. And we're down to the top three trios. Yeah, definitely. They did miss that there was one player just lurking out behind there. And there it is. He's going to sneak on in, start causing big trouble for them. They lose a member in the process. High ground, though, is going to be Mikey. Big 113. If Redux had a little bit more time, the clutch could have happened. There goes Mama Ting, who's going to fall. Keys gets the siphon to stay alive just a little longer. He's got all the heals as well. And this is Smite. Smite, who's uh, managed to find Corn here in the process. He has the lettuce. He's going to go ahead and out heal everyone. Ooh. I mean, he's pulling it off right now. He's going to break down Justice as well here. He's going to take some good fall damage. And Voss has a fighting chance now to go for height. And he is. He's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe here. Stowe's here to back him up. Voss gets pressured by a completely different team. And K Burbs and Jorito here. They're looking on up, trying to see if they can sneak in some big shots. Justice and Eclipse stay hanging back as the zone starts to favor the return from the which they came here. So recycling their materials, that's going to save them a ton right now, giving them another opportunity and potential stab to focus on high ground. But the players in a low low, though, I mean, they're they're struggling right now, right? Bad decisions were made. Things did not go the way that they expected. It's going to cost them a ton. Luckily, this is trios, so though. They do have material to play with, though. And you gamble going down low. These guys trying to decide who gets to go up first. Cost them a little bit, but get to go up. You gamble going low. The height wins and down. the high ground is now in a great position. These guys rotating on through all these old builds. Hopefully able to find some different materials. Now we'll see. Can Andretta and Co. make it further up the mountain? We'll see if zone pulls that way. And yes, it is going further up these mountains and they're battling. It's the x -Set trio with Clarity. Who's going to win this one? It looks like Andretta, Savage, Rest Guard come up to victors. But there's more to battle. 
Yeah, definitely. Seven eliminations right now. And, look, and you know, you, you know he's got to be beating his head. Like, where is the launch pad when you need him most? This would be the perfect place to go ahead and use it to get up and over. Luckily, Andretta is going to work his way. It's going to cost him a lot, though. And now a win condition has been effectively used here as he has to pop these corns just to stay alive. Strafe is so lit up. One shot and shot is what he's looking for here. Can he find a big connection? There it is. That's a siphon. It's beautiful. I mean, the HP is more important now than ever. Just to stay Ooh. alive, Andretta's going to walk right into a pump shot as well. And that's going to be another finish here onto Joji. Nice job for him to go ahead and stay alive. And honestly, playing with house money here, 11 eliminations, a top seven finish. That is not bad by any means for coming out of that low pit. Hey, I have a pop off, have a day. You love to see that, but it's the high ground here that's going to walk away unless someone can come steal it from him. We see plenty of solo players down below. It's Fable Taco, Voss up on the high ground along with So looking to close this out. It's a trio v trio and a solo. Now the battle is going to happen down below. Can Calico help the low ground team and fight height or is he going to take down the low and give this game all up to the high ground? And it looks like if they have anything to do with it, these guys will allow this game to go on no further. End it, close it out right here with the AR spray and take this game right here. Yeah, that's the play right now. And here comes the pressure, that endless, relentless pressure right now to go ahead and close things out. Remember, all they want to do right now is dig into that material count. There's 30 seconds on the clock before this all closes. And finally, now we're set up here for the last couple players, but there's so much damage. The damage has already been done to the big rig there, to the k burbs. There goes the knock. That's a siphon waiting for them too. So the longer this drags on, the less likely they are to actually even pull a victory at this point. k burbs is going to fall to the zone there. Bad plays by him. He tries to deny the siphon but the damage has already been done, right? Tacos found the tags when he needed it, and it is a guaranteed victory royale. Yeah, but not Tony McFishy and Wanted, though. They got a big move to make here, and I mean, they've been turning up all day already. They're at 185 points here, guys. So if they can just make this end game, possibly pull in a victory royale. We've seen a lot of these mid-ground teams manage to do it. Uh, the aggressive strategy is paying off. The unorthodox, if you will, uh, really, really favoring the bold Let's see if that Tony and crew go all the way through, but that's a veteran team on height. Chaotic and strep there. And this is a surge zone right now. 10 players have to go down. They're just barely above. That's going to force the activation for them. They're going to land right inside the mix there. Into the middle layer they go. Looking hungry for a fight. Yes, they find one. That's a beautiful knock right there. They don't even need the materials, but they're going to be happy. They're going to snatch those up, right? Look at this. Maxed out as the team is just... Just blowing out loot there. Even have an extra launch pad to play with as well. This is perfect for them. He just narrowly scoots through all those builds. And that was an interesting launch pad play. Haven't really seen that combination of the high wall plus the ramp, but it works out for him. And up on height, still owning this game. And then we see this mid ground team, Blake, Ocus and Scope likely going to look to make some plays, chop out this high ground if given the opportunity. The low ground is starting to get taken over. There's Kariachi down below. As Batch pops off in the feed, grabbing a couple of eliminations, and so does Andalex. Everyone getting wall to wall. We see Kariachi looking for more, but not able to connect. But no, the preemptive beast control grabbing the walls ahead. They're actually in these players' boxes. Doesn't matter if you're off thing, if you already own the wall, Kariachi and Co. Get in and taking down Adams as well. And now there's just one left in the trio. They're going to leave him be. Crumble, watch out. There's some more coming. Yeah, definitely. And see, this is what makes me really, really love Kiryashi gameplay. He's exciting. He's a, he's a fast style player, this man. It, you know, he really rides the waves here. When he's got the momentum coming, he does not drop at all. And even now, he's continuing to get active here. And look at that. All of a sudden, they've effectively caught multiple Elims here in the end game, showing players why they're so dangerous. You let them get all the way through, but it's that veteran team on height that I'm really concerned about right now. For the rest of the lobby here, they're going to have a tough time besting out Owl Strep right who are on height who are super comfortable here look at this tony i want to see tony take this away but they've already lost a very valuable member oh no but tony gets in the box here. he's gonna win that one as well nice job for him that's a refresh that they really really need it considering they are down a member look the points are starting to truly hop up here now they break that next threshold here they jump into the 200 point plus we do see that trio you asked about earlier carry Batch and Pam Stow still staying alive. But right now it's up to Tony to try and make some clutch plays. He looks to go up, can't find a path forward. Going through these old builds, you'll get caught out. He finds another player, props Tony face to face, but Tony walks away with that elimination. He's getting back with Mick Fishy. The duo is back together. 
and they're not done yet. So many eliminations this game. Tony's gonna look to pop them. Nope, he thought about it, not gonna actually happen and continuing to move on forward. So many players in this mid ground layer. It's gonna be the high ground that's reaping the benefits of this Larson crumble. Looking to go higher and higher, Kariachi gets taken out. And now Tony looks to drop down, play some lower layers, and he's out of max. Yeah, I really like this play though. Finally, he's gonna go ahead and commit to the full on Mickey. This should buy him a little bit of time as McFishy jumps into a block. It's McCanada on the other side of the wall and Fishy's gonna show him who the real MC is. And he comes out there with the W. Chaotic and Owl though, running the high ground here, still looking very, very comfortable right now. Tony jumps back in. He gets the HP buff off of that. And now, off the rewards of Canada's loot there, he finds another Chug Cannon. No loot though to play off the zone. He almost makes the edit. He's gotta pay close, close attention though. That's a free siphon waiting to get picked up. These points are crucial. From 200 to 240, they jump all the way on up. That is a massive, massive climb for them. Strepto, company, they jump down. They fully commit here. I will get traded out and they they leave this open. They leave this open for Nexty and crew to go ahead and win this one out. He's eating too much zone. Nexty all of a sudden manages to find a siphon and they win that one out, but no. Chaotic stays alive just long enough there, Gun. These lobbies are hard to navigate at times too because of the less amount of players. There's all that open space and can easily get you focused, but we see Voss and Taco making this rotation through. So Storm Surge is popping up. It's just the warning. We have 50 seconds or so until that actually takes place. Voss letting his teammate get over to him. These guys are going to need a refresh though. Can't continue to move through this zone without one and it might be our EU trio we saw earlier that's going to be in. They do take down Slicks and Voss gets tagged up pretty big. Able to grab that slurp cannon. That's going to be huge here moving forward. I forget Slicks and crew did have all the material in the world here. So it seems like Slicks was the one who was dropping the split because he gets picked off not only from behind. He also had the least amount of material on that team. But it's enough for someone like Voss who didn't have much to play with. Now he's got the full mini refresh. He's got the chug. Splash can to play with. They lose so in the process though, so it's up to Voss now in Taco by themselves. Try and make this clutch right here. Big shots coming through though. That's that lobby pressure coming on in and the stress, right? The stress of end games are always gonna punish players that drop their guard. Look, Voss playing smart, sweeping out wide here, switching over to hard material, knowing that it's better to use it now rather than later. So just back over to the wood as he's no longer looking to stay stationary. It's all around smart plays here. Being heads up right now is going to keep them in the game. And they've put themselves on this dead side. We've seen a lot of players go down early, but not so much in the end game here. We oh my just God. now get below the storm surge threshold and da down goes our top team from the trio cash cup earlier on Monday. Scope's still alive, picking up Elam's Moraine, getting two knocks there. So those guys are popping off. We're checking up high ground and it's weak up above but no trap looking to take that himself and we're gonna see a little battle going on as disturb disturbish picking up another elim right here onto shadow the cra craziness and chaos that is endgame pursues yeah and shadow was just a knock that means benji is probably still alive right now someone a part of that team there still in this game still in the running right now can't count them out just yet we're up into that top 10 situation here guys and even with top 10 even with nine teams remaining, you can still see there are 20 players congested, jammed up, squeezed, constricted inside of this small, tiny circle on different layers. Threats remain everywhere. You cannot feel safe, not just yet. There's still a very long way. This is an uphill battle here, Gun. And we do see Fabled Taco. This might literally be an uphill battle depending on where the zone is pulling. It's either Look, going- right there way up or way down. Yes, Benji is still alive, looking to make plays. We know he pops off as a solo. We might get to see it once again. But right now, it's this healthy trio, Disturbish, Fear, and ZK, that are managing to navigate through this zone and put themselves in a wonderful position. We're going up this mountain, and these guys are on the front side doing the most to stay alive. Yeah, definitely just trying to stay up, just trying to stay in the game here. Look. Decision, decision. Where do you want to go? Work your way back down or follow the zone all the way through here. It'll be a cost material either way. And they're looking like, hey, if we ride this out, I mean, we don't get any elims, right? But if we jump down, there's an opportunity to go ahead and get inside the fight. For Neon and Trap, they have a different agenda. They've already lost a member. They should have had this victory in the bag. But being two players in the game, I mean, nothing is guaranteed at this point. This is still very sketchy ground they're working on right here. 
Putting shots down, trying to be as textbook as possible, but this is some heavy material. That's the one downside of the zone going back. Yes, you get to save material, but it's all big, healthy structures that usually are fully built out already. And you can see, even with these extra shots here, the Servishing Company holding it out. They go for the launch pad up for high ground. That's a risky play. And it looks like it's a final 3v2. ZK going back, gonna use the Slurp Cannon to try and heal off his teammates. Disturbish goes down. Here takes down Trap. It's a 1v1. Is ZK gonna be able to outheal Neon? He finds him nice. and does close this out. ZK winning a game. Looking down to the second height team. I mean, they were already peeking up towards Furious and the, and the crew there. So kind of showing off, playing their hand a little early. Gotta be careful. Got to be careful indeed. And it looks like Furious, Sizz, and Nounzi are the trio that's going to hold high ground at the moment. A couple of trios playing ulti low. These are some tough games to navigate through, especially when you hit pads, because there's not as many players in the lobby, so you can much more easily get chopped out of the air by a team on high ground. We see Nounzi Furious rotating on through his Figu picks up an elimination. That'll clean up and give them any mats used earlier. This trio playing the mid ground, scooping up eliminations and having a solid match here, even though there's not too much. Looking for more, finds more, and Spigu continuing to play aggressive. Ooh. They clean up another trio right ahead of them. Yeah, definitely. I think they pick up two right there. Yeah, Spigu's just gonna go ahead and find another two. It's so good for him right here. It's gonna be 12 eliminations. I think this is uh, approaching the biggest we've seen, at least on the featured cast of the day today. 13 was the best the victory Royale we watched earlier already at 12. They're looking to start to best that one out there. And again, having this many Elims this late in the tournament run really will allow them to solidify themselves up in that standing. That could be the difference maker. And, and potentially what we're watching unfold here could be the next Cash Cup Extra winner. You see the tail of two games. One trio just barely getting a couple Elims here. But staying alive, scooping up all that placement, and another trio in Straw Hat Charlie scooping up all the eliminations. But actually, Straw Hat goes down in the feed. So Andalex's trio may wind up being the one that outlasts in this game. 19 players remaining, seven teams, and Andalex, these guys know how to play these late games so well. Honestly, I don't know that there's many players that know how to play it better than these three, and. They're looking to clean up this lobby, close out this low ground, and take over. Yeah, the question is, can they do it right now in full here? And, and look at this, only two eliminations, 464. So a team like Spegu, they popped off. Like, they really started to jump up and close the gap. For Analyx, Nazi, and x -Reeze, I mean, it's been all about consistency for them to stay up in the top. So not finding a ton of Elims has been what they've been pursuing. It's just making it to end game, right? Playing smart, outperforming the rest in here. Now they capitalize onto a couple. That's going to be a great find there. With how much material they got, I mean, they've done an exceptional job of map conserving all the way through here. It's not like they found a bunch of Elims, but Analex showing that, hey, he's willing to take these fights. He's willing to win these ones on the low ground. And now they are the clear kings of this lobby here. They have full control and domination of this bottom layer. For everyone else, it's a fight. Goku getting traded. Speckle's gonna find a couple more, and they just are killing it right now. Dude is just unstoppable in this match, taking down everyone, and Furious is gonna end that run for him, but not before they scoot themselves up the leaderboard with a huge elimination game. Still getting top five in placement as well. Furious goes down. KJ Rock Trap now gonna have to clean this up, and they're gonna run into that team down there on the low ground. Looks like it's just Andalex and x now at the moment. A final 3v2, EU versus NA looking to close it out. Can KJ Rop and Co close this out before having to drop down? Likely x and Andalex are gonna force them to take a fight on their terms. Drop down to their lair. It doesn't look like that is the plan here for Neon and Co. They wanna continue uh, to use this AR and just force them to run out of materials. But no, they're dropping in. I was gonna say is what you have to do, right? You have to take your go ahead and take your cards and deal them out here. Let's go ahead and watch it. No, Trap loses the exchange there. The clock is ticking, and now KJ is gonna fall. But Neon, that safety play to sit back, get the heal off, right, and take your time. 
And that's the thing. Oh, yeah, he's got so much to work for. What is all this extra loot? It's like it was planned here. It was calculated. The Peppers are going to also steal the deal there. And look, 200 to 0. 200 to 0 instantly. Not a single player on this trio missed. You got no chance. When that happens, just simply no chance. Oh, oh backwood. Team in an engagement that says, nah. <laughs> Team up above, watch out too. Then proceeds to go take down paper. Mackwood on a tear right now. Just going up, hitting all the shots. These guys need a fairly solid game. If they win this match with 10 or so eliminations, they could also contend for this top spot. So we're going to see a few trios in the same lobby battling it out for that final spot because if we get to see Pam Style go down early, this is really anyone's tournament. Yeah, definitely. It's 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 off the backs right now. Whether or not Pam style carrying fast, you know, just, they just don't get picked apart. Right? If they get picked up, they get taken out. That's it. That's it. The tournament is very much cracked open. Mac with though, a little too confident, pushes on in, lets his guard down. That counter edit. Gotta love when you see a, a proper defensive play like that from Quad. Quad nearly clutches up the ones against Bucky as well. A little more HP, and that would have been his fight to win too. Greater ones up there and. Now we see Stretch, and oh, Stretch is right above this engagement. Clicks is down, in. Bucky gets picked up, but Stretch wants perfect. to get involved. This is perfect for their team, they need these elims, and look at that! One shock and shot, nearly takes the two for the double there. And all of a sudden they hop their way, they spring up to 550. Largely in part due to the save that just went off, I do wonder if they intentionally allowed the pickup to happen either way. It's going to be very much favorable for them. But again, if they fall early, I mean, all it takes is for Kanata to do what he does, man. Hit those shots. And you know what? Just thinking about the way Stretch Staff and Kanata like to play, I'm thinking they're they're playing the high ground take right now. Yeah, that's I'm calling exactly it. what's going on. I'm calling it. They're looking for the win right now. They're looking to take high ground. Uh, like a billion percent. The, the fact that Stretch is even peeking the box right now, they're about to land on them. They're going to mark it. We're going to see if they're just high enough, they're probably going to land right on top as a full team. This would be great. Wouldn't surprise me either. These guys know what they need to do. Decide not to take height, at least not yet. They're waiting, monster. They're, they're building. Letting God, the death. moment come. They need Elims more importantly, so, I mean, you find them down here on the low ground. A wing's just not going to cut it. Look, he's looking for the sniper shot. There it is. Stretch. Plays the big card and doesn't hit the... The shot that would have mattered most is weakening high ground. Now they have to result to a different strategy here. Go back to the old trusty, play the mid ground, look for a new opportunity. But a fight breaks out. 20 on the layer here. It's up to staff and stress to go ahead and win this one. No one can afford to get knocked right now. Not if they want to stay in this. They find that Elim. Chubbs as well. Nice, another two here. They just cut off Batch, Pam style, and carry too. They're on the same layer. Staff's oh. actually getting pressured by that trio. Pamstow and co may close it out all by their own, but look who's taking high ground. Clarity is in the clouds up above. And it looks like Carrie, Pamstow and Fash able to grab some extra loot. I don't think they got any elims there. Nonetheless, continue to rotate through. And as long as they stay alive, that's, that is their win condition. Wall to wall now with one of the teams in contention. A trio trade could be huge and turn this tournament. Change hands of our first place team. That's definitely what would have happened there. The punishment comes into Fatch and they back off. Kanata, Saf and Stretch are hungry right here, though. They're looking for it. And they're still on the same layer. Yes, there's a little bit of distance between the two, but both are looking to jockey up for this positioning here. Fatch caught out by himself in front. Carry grabs the wall, though. Predictive wall control here. And look, Kanata's reading that. He's saying, okay, these guys are playing way smarter than a normal team. We got to get off this layer here. They respect them that much to give them up the position and go for height instead. Clarity falls to the fall damage. And Kanata now effectively has himself an Elim waiting into the box. He goes to tracking just better. Down goes Kanata. These Elims are so important because they can still catch up. It only takes a couple more. There's 30 players in the game. Pamstall goes down there to Fortnite or in the feed. This is big. The tables are turning now. The door has been opened, but still fashion carry looking for it. Gabe gets beamed here by Kanata. They're looking for all these elims. They're going to have to drop and try and get more. They know that. They're continuing to force this lobby down, grabbing some extra eliminations. 
This is what this team is known for. They know how to play the high ground and close these out. But not only do they need to win the game, Carries they need down. to clutch up and get some eliminations. Batch going to scoop up as many solo points as he can, hitting the med kit play. Does he get caught out here, Monster? I mean, he's got to stay up right now. He's got to stay up. Otherwise, not a stretch and staff will like just steal this tournament away from them. They've done such a phenomenal job so far, staying consistent and being in the game. Look, 30 points is all it takes here for every team that falls now. Placement points to be given. Going to get given out both ways. So Carry has to stay up. And still, a team has not fallen yet. Still top eight, top seven, finally. That's one more breath of air Carry can let out here. The longer or fast can let out. The longer he can stay alive right now, the better his chances are. Tahi getting pushed off the layer. Another two teams fall here. Is it mathematically impossible? We don't know just yet because Fatch is still up. He is somewhere alive here in the mix. If he finds the Elim, I mean, he might just have done enough to go ahead and continue to maintain that first place here. But Kanata Stretch and Staff, they're fighting an uphill battle here. They need all these Elims. Andalex, x Suiz, and Snazy are still alive too. This oh, is another no. trio that could be fighting for top spots. And now it's head to head. It's the final two trios. This could be the difference between thousands of dollars. Stretch takes down Andalex. Now can Kanata, Stretch, and Saf close this out? It is down to a final 2v2. The safety net up above the heels. And yes, they do win the game. 13 eliminations. But is that enough? And my goodness, Monster D face, look at that. Not even 10 points separating first, second, and third. <gasps> and it's not even Pam oh that takes gosh. second. Yeah, it looks like Andalix, Nazy, and x managed to pop off and literally squeeze out the top there, all coming down to those final 